لا حول ولا قوة إلا حتى الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من الله فلا مضل له ومن يؤلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا نقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في تنزيل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله وقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم ما بعد فإن خير كلام كلام الله سبحانه وتعالى وخير هدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محتثاتها فإن كل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى we seek his help, we seek his assistance, and we seek refuge in Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala from the evil within ourselves and the bad consequences of all evil deeds. 
the most high and the one who gives all of the blessings in his hand is the dominion and he is the one that gives the blessings over Allah guides to the straight path then none will be able to lead him astray for as long as that person stays with the guidance leaves astray leaves to desires leaves to falsehood leaves to destruction out of his knowledge and his wisdom that they will reject it then none will be able to guide them aright although your call is night and day except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn those people hearts around I bear witness there is no deity that has the right to be worshipped la ilaha illahu except Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala la ilaha illallah there's no one that has the right to be worshipped except Allah. La There is no true deity or thing to be served and worshipped in totality except Allah. He is alone without any partners. He is alone without any dominion sharing. He is alone. He's unique in his name's attributes and what he does. Or he's in the class by himself. And I bear witness of the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of Al Quraysh from the Beni Hashim, who is from the lineage of Ismail, whose mother was a black lady, Hajar, whose father was Khalil Allah. Allah took him as a close one, Ibrahim. I bear witness the prophets from their lineage, and there's no prophets and messengers to come after him at all. Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala, he mentioned in his noble book in Surah Al. And I'm the Sora of the cattle. Very, very interesting Sora. A lot of rules, regulations, and a lot of things that have to do with the daily life. Sora and I'm cattle. Tabaraku wa ta'ala, he mentioned in that Sora, he told the Prophet to say, Kuliman fi Say to them, yani, those people who are challenging you, say to the Muslims, say to the Jews of Al Medina, say to the Mushrikun, the pagans of Mecca, the outskirts, say to the Christians of Najran on the border of Saudia, which was part of the Yemeni territory, say to all of them, who does the heavens? in the earth and whosoever dwells in them belong to then Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala told the prophet to say to them kulillah it belongs to Allah in this ayah Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala he continues and he says kataba ala nafsihi rahma he has prescribed and wrote for himself Allah him the creator of everything in the heavens and the earth mercy and that that mercy is going to be the main thing when he gathers you and he promises he will gather you all on the day of judgment in which there's no doubt about that day except those who disbelieve but the doubt is fake the day is real and then Allah said alladhina khasiru and force a home those who ruin and lose everything for themselves in this life and on that day la you mean no they are those who did not believe the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam he mentioned in the second of bukhari in his sahih kitab to he imam bukhari has a section called kitab to he the things that are under the category of Tawheed. And what would explain to you what is the Tawheed? It is a concept that is very broad, not restricted. Check this out. Imam Bukhari put in his talking about the Tawheed, the Hadith Abu Huraira. He mentioned that the Prophet called Rasulullah. 
the day when Allah created creation. That means the heavens, the earth, the throne, the pen, the angels, Adam, the trees, anything you could think of. Everything besides Allah is created. That's the meaning of Alameen. Alameen means everything that's created. So when you're reciting Al Fatiha, you may not even know what you're reciting. Rabbul Alameen, Rabbul of everything that's created. And that is the meaning of Alameen. The day when Allah created everything that He created, the Prophet said, Kataba. Fi kitabin, wa huwa ma'ahu. He had it written, he told the pen to write which he created in the book and the book was with him above his throne that my mercy it is more prevailing than my punishment I mean than my anger pardon me because God means Anger doesn't mean punishment, like Yusuf Ali translate the anger to be wrath or punishment. Nah, that was a slip of the tongue. Ghadab, Allah's anger. So he told the pen, right, and then the rahmati, that the mercy, my mercy, it is wider and it's going to take more prevalence over my anger. I have prescribed my mercy to outweigh even my anger. I have prescribed my mercy that I desire that for you in every kind of way. I'm going to give you all the different ways to have that mercy rather than the anger that you earn. And another narration, the Prophet said, Allah said in the same hadith, same context, my mercy is vaster, more wider than my Allah, he mentioned in the Quran that Allah is yani, shadid al-iqab. He is the one who will punish you severely. Why he says, and Allah, yani, rahim, and that Allah forgives, and he's the most merciful, he forgives a lot. So this hadith is in line with the ayah in Surah the An'am, where Allah said, Kataba ala nafsi rahmah. Naam, I have prescribed, I have made, I have ordained, I have made it the obligation to have more mercy on you than being angry with you. To have more mercy on you than punish you. While you may be the ones who deserve the punishment. The ulama, they said, the tipsy of this ayah, there's two forms of mercy that Allah is talking about because Allah said, هذا لام التوكيد ونون ثباتس لكم this Allah is saying, without any shadow of a doubt, I'm going to gather you on that day. There's no doubt in this day. Just like Allah said in Surah Tabakrah, La'ari Bafi means there's no falsehood. There's no mistakes. There's no yani, having a man-made opinion or anything to do with it humanly with the Quran. Allah said, Larry Bafi, no falsehood, no tricks. Humans don't have anything to do with this book. Likewise, the day of judgment being gathered to Allah, no falsehood. Humans don't have any control over that. There's nothing of a fairy tale. Allah said, La yajma'an naku ila yawmul qiyamati, Larry Bafi. I'm going to gather you on a day. There's not any doubt about that. Allah mentioned that after he mentioned his mercy. And so the ulama, they said the mercy here that Allah is talking about is on Yom al Qiyamah. There's mercy in this life. We get it every day. When you breathe, that's from Allah's mercy. When Ramadan, imagine you can have anything, have anything to drink, anything to eat after fasting. In a short day, you look forward to drinking and eating. What about a long day? On a warm or cool day, we look forward to breaking your fast. What about when the days were long and hot? It's a mercy. Kiswa, clothing to cover your body, shelter it from the heat or the cold or the sun, sheltered from the people seeing your private parts, which is a part of fitrah, 
You don't want people to see you nude. Which shows you the opposite. People that don't care, then they lost the fitrah. They have no nature nor natural disposition. A mercy to have a place to sleep where no one can come and harm you. Your doors are locked. A mercy. Vehicles. Yeah, I need to travel through the earth with windows you can let down for air and air condition and windows you can raise up for uh, keeping the cold out and heat you to cut on for warmth. Mercy. Different types of food and drink, but to stuck for Allah, you find the Muslims so wasteful in Ramadan. The same food and drink. Allah most time. Mercy. Mercy. The ability to cry. Mercy, the ability to laugh. Mercy, the ability to show joy. Mercy, the ability to be sad. Mercy, the ability to open your eyes, look around. Mercy, the ability to hear. Mercy, the ability to have taste buds. This is too salty. This is too sweet. Oh, that's cold. Ah, it burns my tongue. Mercy. Spouses, mercy. A wife, mercy. A righteous wife, greatest mercy. An upright husband, mercy. A mercy that you can't even numerate. But here Allah is talking about mercy in one issue. On the day of judgment. The ulama they said this comes in two forms. Listen very closely, all servants of Allah. So the first type of mercy. Allah delaying, Ta'akirahu, Allah delaying, Adaban, Liman Yastahepohu, Allah delaying the punishment, Ta'akirahu, Adaban, Min Khalkahi, Aladi Yastahepohu, Lahu, Allah holding back, delaying, detouring punishment, calamity, harm. From the creation that is deserving that punishment. Sometimes punishment is written for you, you don't even know it. You're headed for something. Allah withholding it from you is a mercy. That's what the ulama is talking about the context of the mercy, Yomu Qiyama. You're facing the punishment on that day. You're facing the, facing the punishment. Maybe it's to drink Shurbul Hayim. Boiling hot water. Allah holds you back from it. Maybe it's that you will shoot yourself in the head over and over and over because you committed suicide. Allah spares you from that punishment. Maybe it's the hooks the Prophet mentioned in the Hadith will grab the jaws of a person while he's hanging upside down and rip from one side to the other because he was talking, he was backbiting. Talking about people. All types of punishment. Ta'akhirahu adhaban an khalqihi man istahaqabih. Allah, delaying the punishment for whom's deserving that punishment. You earned that punishment. You did what gets you that punishment. Allah, He holds it back. Rahma kataba ala nafsi. That he wrote, he made it an obligation. This is how I'm going to be to my servants. They said the second of the mercies in this context, on the day of judgment, that Allah has made binding. Ketaba made binding. Ketaba, he made an obligation. Ketaba, he prescribed it, he has to follow through with it. Will be more prevailing than his anger. His mercy will be more prevailing than his punishment. Kabul Toba. Accepting the repentance of those who sin. The second type of mercy, Yom al Qiyamah, accepting the Toba, the repentance, the sorrow, the regret, the tears, the begging, not the punishment. Forgive us. Allah accepting that from you on the day of judgment. Those are the two types of mercy that Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala is talking about in Surah Al-An'am. Kulli man tisamawati wa ar Say to them, who does everything in the heavens and the earth belong to? 
Then the Prophet Allah said, tell them, Kulillah, it all belongs to Allah. Allah said, and I made my mercy. I have decreed my mercy. I have prescribed my mercy. I have made it incumbent on my own self that my mercy is more than my punishment. If it's a choice between punishing you that you earn and forgiving you, I want to forgive you. If it's a point or an issue between the anger, I'm being angry with you. I'm not happy with you. And forgiving you, I want to show mercy. No doubt. Have no mistake about it. Don't be deluded. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. Worry about what I'm saying. Surely I'm going to gather you all on the day of judgment. There's no doubt of that. When they be in a hustle rule and force at home, those who ruin themselves with sin those who ruin themselves with shirk those who ruin themselves with kufr disbelief those who ruin themselves with bid'ah those who ruin, ruin themselves with innovation those who ruin, ruin themselves with ma'asi types of major sins allah as a rajal he said la yu'minu they did not really truly believe they had either hypocrisy or they had pure 100% disbelief as a person, not a Muslim, or they had some type of disbelief that overshadowed their iman, whether it's in belief or actions. We ask Allah to protect us from hypocrisy, disbelief. We ask Allah to bless us, give us his mercy in this life and on the hereafter. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to be from those that he hold back its punishment from us in this life, the hereafter, and hold back the punishment of the grave, the hellfire, and that Allah accepts the good deeds. And from the good deeds is the tobe of those who sent to him. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak. Ala abdillahi wa rasulih wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم تسليم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has given us before we reach him on the day of judgment many ways to obtain his mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability tamiz, to determine and to discern between what's right and wrong this is part of the mercy that Allah has given you truq, ila rahmatihi, ways to his mercy and he has given you Ten years, you can discern between, wait a minute, that's not right, this is right. He has given you the ability to discern between what's safe and what's dangerous. But oftentimes Allah refers to those people who don't use those abilities, those faculties, as those who Allah Tabarakul wa ta'ala described in the Quran, Sumun Bukmun Umyun, Sumun Bukmun Umyun, death, dumb and blind. Death. While they have ears, Allah said that they hear with. Dumb. Why he has given them intellect to not be dumb. Blind. Why he has given them ears to see with, they still don't see. And that has to do with the physical and the spiritual actions that these individuals that are described like this carry out. Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala has blessed us and we take it for granted. But let us on this day work hard because we don't know how much time we have left in this world. And that's real. And we, as they say in Jackie Lee, rolling the dice, you're taking a chance, you're playing with your Jannah every day. You're negotiating whether you go to Jannah 
paradise or the hellfire when Allah wrote for the believers one place, paradise. And it's a high role that you have to play to earn that mercy. Maybe Allah as a wajal, as he chooses what he wills. Maybe choose I'm not going to be merciful to that individual. Fir'aun is not going to get the mercy. Allah already mentioned that in the Quran in the time of Musa. Abu Lahab is not going to get the mercy of the Prophet. Iblis, la'anatullah alayhi, shaitan, you can forget it. Burt min rahmatillah. He's the most farthest removed from the mercy of Allah. Some people are not going to get it. People are not going to get it. And for us, don't rely on the mercy of Allah, but rely on it. What I mean by that in closing. The Prophet said, Malu Ali Dawood Shukura. Naam. Do the actions, O oh, family of Dawood, that shows you're grateful. Because just as I stand here in closing, grateful, everybody has a role that they came from. When you were born Muslim, you accepted Islam for Christianity. You had no religion. You were a Jew. Everybody has somewhere they came from. And the Muslim is a human being. The Muslim still has to live in this life. But Allah, he chooses us. Like in this story, received the call yesterday from back home. Again, you're talking about a people who are summum, bukmun, umyum. They are far from any guidance where I come from. And brothers say, oh, give them dawah. You can't give dawah to a person. His mind is on the moon, on drugs, anything they can take or anyone they can keep. You can't give dawah to a person like that. Let's be realistic. People say this about the people in the street. Oh, just give them dawah. These people don't even know sometimes what their name is or what time of the day it is. What dawah? One of the conditions of shahada, the person has to understand what's being said to them and what they're repeating. The shahada would not even be accepted. So I get a phone call from my sister, nine months older than me. She's a Christian lady holding the Bible, this and that. My nephew, her son, and my younger brother, who's been strung out since my mom died seven years ago. A gangbanger, strung out, breaking buildings, eating dope, dope heroin, running with some lady, prostitute, Allah Musta'an. Now my nephew was in jail. Apparently they robbed somebody. That lady was part of it. She got shot in the neck. She died four days later. He was in jail, first degree murder, first degree robbery, first degree this, first degree that. Looking for my younger brother. But I'm from that cloth. As my brother reminded me last night, he said, you were put on the doorstep in six months. I said, yeah, like Musa was put in the basket and put in the water. I was put in a doorstep, a preemie baby to some people who raised me because my mother was running the streets. With my father, who was a felon, a convict. You think now I'm a convict, I'm a felon because my father, no. Stereotype. And look, a lot guided me. I got a story to tell. I'm before you, you're a man, blind. And this is from the mercy of Allah in this life. Look at it. Do we have doubt about the mercy on Yom Kiyama? Stories about the mercy in this life. Why we don't believe in the mercy on the day of judgment? And if we believe in that mercy and we thank Allah and we got our head high like the prophet came from the worst of the people, Allah picked from him, he's the prophet and messenger. Mercy to mankind. Allah called him Rahmatul Alameen. A mercy to everybody. But we don't have our heads up like that. So the Muslim getting high, the Muslim shooting and robbing, the Muslim doing like the story I mentioned to people who don't believe in Allah and his messenger.
And that's the opposite of Allah's mercy upon you. That's the end of Allah upon you. That's a form of punishment in this life. Well, Azab al to Ashad, while the punishment of the hereafter is worse than everlasting. So let us remember in these last days of Ramadan and the last nights, we got to work hard. Don't be from the people you hope Allah give you the mercy. You hope Allah maybe accept your toba. Yeah, hope Allah gives you mercy. Hope Allah accept your toba. But guess what? The best way is they used to say in Jahiliyyah, don't do the crime if you can't pay the time. Be upright. Allah has given us much, and this is the best way to show the gratitude to Allah and to receive his mercy, to avoid his punishment, to avoid his anger in this life and the hereafter. Oh Allah, we ask you to guide us aright. Oh Allah, we ask you to make us grateful, to make us hold our heads up high, to cleanse our hearts from every sin and disbelief and vice. Oh Allah, we ask you to make us vanguards of your religion, first for ourselves and our families and others. Oh Allah, we ask you to forgive us for our shortcomings, to replace them with good deeds, Oh Allah, accept from us our fasting, accept from us our prayers, accept from us our charity, accept from us all our good deeds that we did in this month and before. Oh Allah, we ask you to bless us to die, the righteous and not the, the death of those who are the sinners. Oh Allah, shower us with your mercy in this life and then the hereafter. King of Salah. Still to Ross. Straightening your lines, filling the gaps, line up shoulder to shoulder with the foot, barely straightening the rows for the perfection of the salat. Barely straightening the rows for the perfection of the salat. Please, when you hear no phones, put them on vibrate. Complete the first row before you start the second row. Still, to raw, so I tell you, look. The Lord Salatu Muwadda prays if this is your last prayer, meaning turn your heart to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Am I straight? Whoa, Akbar. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasna'een, Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, Sirat Wal-Ladheena An-Amta Alayhim, Wa'il Maghbubi Alayhim, Malabbali. Allah <laughs> إنه يعلم الجحر وما يخفى وليستبق الجيوسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يكشى يتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلها من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله سمي الله ونيمن حميدا الله Allahu Akbar. Allahu 
below, like about. Long at the bump. Allah like a bump. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Maliki, Yomidin, Eak and Abu Dua, Eak and Estain. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين قل يا ايها الكافرون لا اعبد ما تعبدون ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد ولا انا عابد ما عبدتم ولا انتم عابدون ما اعبد لكم دينكم لكم دينكم ولي دين الله سمي الله لمن حمده اللهم ربنا الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر Allah Allah السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله مرحبا صفر الله 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 to really get the people who want to be consistently giving something to the master every month. And uh, I could say, like we told down on this club, but really, we got $20, $50, just be consistent about whatever you can do. So we have some forms here if you want to participate in that. Come to Shake Allergy here. And yeah, we have some from before, but this is from people who are just. Uh, who decide to today in the month of Ramadan to be amongst those who are consistent in regards to supporting the masjid. Um, we have gotten a park for eight and it will be at the uh, James Berry Park in Charlottesville again. Uh, we are looking for possibly Sunday morning or Monday morning. And the line was best when we did it. The eight of picture. The box is there. Ten dollars per family member. Get your money in there early because we pick up food. And the people need time to go ahead and get the food. If you know anybody that needs eat, uh, eat a pitcher. Uh, so it's a kind of pitcher, excuse me. Then uh, please let me know some people that are in need of it. Three. We have a shake coming to uh, visit us next week. He will be speaking on uh, Friday at 7 and Saturday at 6.15. As you all may know, if you already have been reading the Quran as well, uh, Islam has always been a religion of activism, a religion of calling people against the forces that are in effect or in power at that time. 
This is why the Quraysh were trying to run Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of town and tried to kill him. When this brother 